Welcome to Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age, the show designed to help make middle age your prime time of life by defying the notion that once you reach 40, 50, or even 60 years old, your crowning achievements are all behind you. Regardless of whether you're just approaching 40 or are firmly entrenched in your middle years, it's time to launch your very own personal journey toward a joyful and purpose-filled second half of life. Each week, host Roy Richards, an expert on midlife renewal and author of A Midlife Challenge, Wake Up, will discuss the challenges common to middle age and help guide you to a brighter tomorrow. Now, here's Roy. Well, if, like me, you live in the northern half of the U.S. or in Canada or northern Europe, you're probably getting pretty tired of winter. The good news is spring will soon be here. Heck, Groundhog Punxsutawney Phil tells us that we're in for an early spring. But here's a question for you. Along with nature, are you uh, ready to wake up from your uh, dormancy, perhaps an an uninspiring daily existence that has gone on for years to begin living life joyfully on purpose this spring? Even better from this day forward. And regular listeners may recall that back on our August 5, 2019 program, I introduced you to a remarkable young lady, Nancy Solari, who uh, gave us suggestions on how to shake off the cobwebs and begin to live your life, as she calls it, full out. Don't forget you can access and listen to our prior programs anytime from our program website. And today we're fortunate to have Nancy Solari back to our program with some unique new tips to inspire you to begin living out loud with a positive intent. And to refresh your memory, here is Nancy's remarkable story, She overcame a difficult past as a child witnessed domestic violence and parents divorced when she was 10. Her mother fought against breast cancer, and as an adult, she suffered from sexual harassment, thoughts of suicide, five miscarriages, and spousal infidelity. Uh, Spousal, that is. (laughs) Rather than giving up on her dreams, Nancy prospered in TV production shows you may have heard of Good Morning America and Entertainment Tonight, when she was also a successful singing career and is a top producing realtor in Southern California, and she's CEO of Living Fallout, Inc., a company she founded back in 2008, and she's a certified life and business coach, seminar leader, accomplished public speaker, and author of inspirational books. And she's host of the weekly Living Fallout radio program that you can listen to on the radio in Greater L.A. on Saturdays or 24 hours a day on the Internet. And she's also a TV talk show host of the same name. Uh, You can check that out through her website. We'll talk about that later. And, oh, by the way, since age 16, Nancy Solari has suffered from retinitis pigmentosa, progressive eye disease that has left Nancy legally blind, but instead of giving in and feeling sorry for herself, she has challenged blindness to accomplish success most of us folks can only dream about. And hello, Nancy Solari. It's great to have you back on Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age. Well, I am so happy to be here, and Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age. I love it. Well, please refresh our memories. Can you give us a brief definition of what you mean when you uh, tell us that despite any obstacles to courageously live full out, what does that mean exactly? Well, so here's the thing. We know that something's going to happen every day, right? (laughs) It could be at the minimal where your pen dies, and you're like, where's my pen, right? Where's another pen? (laughs) It could be a pop tire. It could be somebody letting you down. They show up late. They break a promise. Or it could be big things. Your iPhone cracks. Your computer stops working. You know, well, hopefully it is, can sometimes be good things uh, as well. You know? Well, no, no. I'm just saying the obstacles. Those are the obstacles. Yeah, if, yeah. You know, if you know an obstacle is coming, then you're ready for it. It's yeah. when you're not prepared that you're not able to manage it. And so when I say that, you can live full out despite the obstacles because when they yeah. come – you're ready for it. It's almost like being a boxer, right? Yeah. <laughs> you're kind yeah, of like true. a boxer in life, right? But um, but I say that all in a loving spirit because life is meant to be joyful. It is meant to be an exciting adventure. But just like the thrill of going 
up a roller coaster and then the fear of going down, you know, you're going to have those same <laughs> highs and lows in life, right? Yeah. Yeah, I never forget going up that first hill when you're being pulled up on a, <laughs> a chain. <laughs> and you but think click, about click, that click, 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 yeah, it's scary. <laughs> yeah. Well, on your website, you tell us that living full out mindset is dependent upon success in 13 elements of living. And we covered six of those elements on the prior program. But I'd like to ask you about some of them today. What do you mean by the element let, let life layer? <laughs> you know, that is a, such a great one. And I, I really take that to heart myself because think about the times that we do have something happen in our life and, you know, we get a little bruised up by it, right? Our ego yeah. gets hurt by it. You know, we actually grow from it. And even sometimes if we have a job and we lose the job, but then you get another job, right? Or, you know, going back to school and getting educated. It's kind of funny. It's it's like when somebody, you know, graduates from college, right? You don't get yeah. your dream job right out of graduation. Yeah. A lot of times you, you kind of go from job to job or experiment in different careers, and then you find the one that feels like home to you. And same with relationships, right? You know, for all those that are lucky enough to find the love of their life in high school, you know, for many of us, we, you know, we have to go on some dates and kiss some frogs and find some princesses, right? Yeah, So it's just letting life layer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. And uh, like you say, if we spend our lives trying to stop things from happening, then we never learn anything. (laughs) Exactly. We just end up stuck. (laughs) How about learning to leverage? What does this mean? So this is a really important one, and it's not just about business. It's also just life management. So, you know, it would be great if we were all good at everything, but we're not. So the thing is, is you want to – some of your friends might be really good with money, and you might want to turn to them and learn from them. What are they investing in? Who is their financial planner? Or maybe there might be somebody who's really good at keeping a schedule. They're so efficient with their time. And maybe you might want to turn to that person and say, how do you manage your time so well? And so I think a lot of times we want to leverage the people in our life, the money we have, and the time we have to really get to achieving the goals we have. Yeah, the key is, of course, you have to offer something in return (laughs) when you leverage Someone else, you also have to give back what your capabilities are to help them. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm-hmm. And that that sort of brings me to the next uh, element, make a difference. Why is this element essential? This one is huge because at the end of the day, at the end of our life, we're not going to take awards with us, we're not going to take money with us, right? Yeah. It, you really want to wake up every day and say, how can I make every, you know, certain people in your life's day better? So how can yeah. I make my spouse's life better today? How can I bring a smile to my employee's face today? You know, I'm going to do one nice thing for a stranger today, and that could be opening a door. It could be buying them a coffee, right? Yeah. And when you make a difference – you know, it, it, two things happen. You get the joy of giving, and then somebody gets to receive that gift and know that somebody's thinking of them, somebody cares about them. And that's the biggest gift you can give. Yeah, nobody's really going to satisfy a joyful life if you just concentrate on accumulating things for yourself and accumulating advantages for yourself and don't really reach out to anyone, be it your spouse or a friend or a total stranger, like you say. It it just doesn't work if you do it all solo. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Well, here's another good one. I'll I'll touch on this one, then we'll move on to something else. But uh, you tell us uh, one of the elements is forgive yourself and others. Why is the uh, the ability to forgive such a key element to a rich, fulfilling, and joyful life? The thing about forgiveness Let's just, I'm going to answer it in two different ways. Yeah. If you, the thing about forgiving yourself is if you don't forgive yourself on mistakes or misjudgments that you've made, then you basically put yourself in an emotional prison. Yeah. You beat yourself up. You judge your, you're, you're the judge. You're the jury. You're the prosecutor, <laughs> right? You're everything, right? 
And so you have to free yourself. You have to say, you know what, I'm going to let life layer, and I'm going to move on from this mistake. I'm going to do better. I'm going to, you know, make a difference. All those accesses, right? And then the other thing about forgiving other people, and this is a really big one because, you know, people will do us wrong. But if, if we allow ourselves to stay angry, jaded, upset, we're actually giving our power away. That's We're right. letting You're that not other helping person win. either the other it's, person or yourself by holding a grudge. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Now, just keep in mind, just because you forgive doesn't mean you forget, <laughs> okay? <laughs> but, you're re- but you're releasing that toxic uh, environment, that, yeah. that toxic feeling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I'd like to turn to a great free download you offer through your website, livingfullout.com called 80 Tips on How to better communica- uh, to Have Better Communication in Your Relationships, Increase Productivity, and the Motivation You Need to Have More Balance in Living Full Out. Quite a title, but it's uh, uh, great to have those 80 tips. Obviously, we don't have time to cover all 80, but perhaps you can touch upon a few. Let's begin with tip number three, be specific. In setting our goals for the future, what do we need to do to help Uh, ensure objectives are achieved and achievable well consider it like holding the space okay so for example i recently lost my service dog he passed away at 13 years old and i will be getting another four-legged friend and i'm i'm being open yet i'm specific I know I want a licker, not a yelper, right? I know yeah, I want I know I want a dog between or a biter. The ages or a biter. Yeah, no biter. I know I want a dog between 1 and 3, not quite yeah. a puppy but not too old. Yeah. And, you know, I I know that for me short-haired dogs are less maintenance than dogs where to have to go get it groomed all the time. Yeah. That's and so for sure. you're kind of being specific with building this ideal but but yet leaving some room some wiggle room right for yeah. the freedom of what is meant to be yeah you and you've got to reassess your progress toward these goals every so often but if they're not specific if you just say i want to uh, have a million bucks by the time i'm 50 without any plans to get there or really ideas how you're going to do it, it's probably not going to happen. <laughs> well, and I, and I also think, too, like a lot of times people might, be, might say, well, I don't know what I want. Like how can I be specific if I don't know what I want? Yeah. Well, I always say in that case, look at people that have the ideal career that you'd like to have. And don't be afraid to pick up the phone and take them to coffee or interview them over the phone and find out what their path was. What did they do right? What do they wish they did differently? And yeah. then that will piece together um, specific goals that you can have for yourself. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense because that is a failing of so many people. They don't really have specific life goals. They just sort of trudge along and wait for retirement, which they haven't really defined what they want to do in that. <laughs> Or they want to, or they want to win like mega millions, which yeah. never could happen. <laughs> they buy a could lottery ticket. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, here's tip seventeen: is to expand your awareness. That sounds like a great idea, but how do you accomplish this? I don't know just what that means to expand your awareness. Well, you know, the interesting thing about expanding our awareness is when we think that only one thing is the end all. That's when you hit a brick wall over and over and over again, right? Yeah. Like somebody may have always wanted to be an athlete, but yeah. at some time the body is going to change, right? Yeah. But that doesn't mean that you couldn't be a coach. You could volunteer. You could yeah. assist. You know, you might work for an apparel company that happens to sell the gear or the sh- or the apparel that, that uh, for the sport that you like. Yeah. So it, the main thing is when you expand yourself to what is possible, more options will come your way. And again, some people might say, well, that's great, but how do I find those options? You know, don't be afraid to go online and do some Google searching of, yeah. you know, what's out there. Take a couple quizzes and tests to see, like, not, kind of like a personality test, right? But there's career tests out there, too. Or you might, again, kind of look to what other people have done and let that be a guide. I was kind of surprised by tip number 17, or number 21, I should say, where you tell us to postpone projects 
How in the world does procrastination, putting a project off, contribute to living full out? (laughs) Oh, my gosh. I love this one. It is so freeing because a lot of times most people are yes people. You know, can you help me do this? Yes. Will you help me move? Yes. Do you want to go to dinner? Yes. Right? And at some point, it just becomes too much. I mean, you can't give what you don't have. So if you constantly deplete yourself or put so many expectations and deadlines on your plate, you're you're setting yourself up to to drop one of those balls that you're juggling, right? So I always say... It's it's not about saying no, it's just not right now. So you look at what has to be done, what has yeah. to be done, what affects other people or what is a, an emergency deadline. But then there are many things in our life that we can defer. We can say, you know what, let's do it in two weeks from now. Let's do yeah. it a month from now. Mm-hmm. That's so true, and you have to prioritize what really matters to you and to your boss or whatever <laughs> and what uh, doesn't matter so much. Absolutely. Well, here's one that uh, I really wonder about. Number 34 tells you to give up control. This uh, sounds counter to advice we frequently are given to remain in control of our own life and our own destiny. Under what circumstances are you suggesting that we give up control? It's interesting. When you can flow through life and not you know when you're like say you're you're driving right and you're gripping the steering wheel right yeah you want to release your grip don't take your hands off the wheel i'm not saying do that right (laughs) but i'm saying release the grip you know and 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 you know what if traffic is taking you left go left don't you don't have to go the same path home every day you can go a different route and so sometimes you have to let go of control or maybe if it's in a work environment you know, other people are capable. Other people have ideas. And sometimes it's good to give a project over and see what others do. Yeah, it's, it's, especially if you've been doing a project over and over and you're fully capable of doing it, it's boring you to tears. <laughs> it's high time you let go of that and experiment with something new, <laughs> something that may offer a, a real lifetime of uh, you know, enjoyment and peace of mind and happiness, and you have to trust somebody else to do it. And if they don't do it effectively, you can always take it over again if you have to. Absolutely, yep. Well, here's number 39 is define balance. At middle age, I'm afraid a lot of us have forgotten how to reestablish balance in our lives. How do we go about redefining and then accomplishing that life balance? You know the thing I love about middle age is that if we really listen to our bodies and if we really kind of, again, kind of trust the process of life and and be a little bit more, you know, flexible, we will find that, you know, that that things are meant to go in a certain direction. So, you, you know, what I find for myself is, Let's say it's a day that I, I'm feeling kind of tight, right? I've, I've just yeah. done a lot of working out, and I'm, I'm feeling like I can't quite move to the right or the left, or my, I have a kink in my neck, right? Yeah. It, that's an opportunity to say, you know what? I've worked really hard, and I'm going to treat myself to a massage. <laughs> Sounds right? like good balance. <laughs> now, now, that's balance, right? Yeah. That's the yeah. body saying to you, hey, I need some relaxed time. Or, you know, maybe it's time to put down the books, put down the pen and paper, stop working, and just veg out. Watch Shark Tank if you want to. Just allow yourself to decompress. I like where you said have a few moments. When you have a few moments, open a journal or grab a piece of paper and define what balance means to you. Because I don't think a lot of us really think about balance. We just let uh, obligations lead us where it may. (laughs) That's how we get so stressed out and depressed with life. Well, and and balance is going to be different for everybody, but balance is really just making sure that you have personal time, work time, friend time, family time. And you know what? That just might be given each of those an hour a day, two hours a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's for sure. Well, we've only just scratched the surface. Please advise how our listeners can obtain their very own free copy of all 80 tips. 
that you they offer. They can go, yeah, they can go to livingfullout.com, and right there on the home page, you can put in your name and email, it'll go right away to you, and it's free. There's no cost for it, but it's it's interesting. Even I refer to these 80 tips yeah. because sometimes we need little reminders of how to inspire us to just keep going on those hard days or the days we just feel uninspired. Yeah. You know? Well, before we move on, I learned something very fascinating from your website that I hadn't thought about. But with going out with someone new or, for that matter, meeting for the first time a potential friend or business associate, you truly are going out on a blind date. Uh, but you relate that uh, your blindness gives you an advantage over those of us who can see. And what is that advantage, and what can we do to overcome our tendency to concentrate more, too much on outward appearance? You, I love that you asked this question. Yeah, I, I didn't realize how much my visual impairment actually set me free. Um, and a good example of that is when I was hanging out with a friend who had just came back to L.A. He was in Thailand for many years. And he's like, oh, my gosh, I can't believe I'm back here. All these all these people who are driving their nice cars and they're they're trying to have a certain image. And I looked at him and I said, hmm, what are you talking about? See, I didn't see that. I didn't see, yeah. uh, you know, uh, people trying to be something they may or may not be. Yeah. I just heard people laughing. I yeah. just felt people smiling. And, you know, I th- I think the important thing here is that it's not about playing the part. It's not about looking good. What everybody wants to remember is that you are an original, and it's about becoming the best you and and you're going to be your own mom different than your your mom. You're going to yeah. be a different uh, boss different than previous bosses you've had. You just want to find what makes you special and unique and run with it. Yeah, I like what this uh, server, a friend of ours at uh, the local Cracker Barrel said, that uh, the real me is inside. This <laughs> thing you see is just the shell I'm living in right now, but... The- and that's so true of us all. The real us, our, the real person is inside, and that's who we really should get to know. I, and I couldn't agree that. more. I think that's perfect. <laughs> yep. Well, before we go, I'd like to talk about some of the many resources you offer through your website, livingfullout.com. As an inspirational life coach, you offer individual guidance on both personal and professional challenges, how to break free from discouraging disappointments, and accomplish anything you choose. Tell our listeners a bit about the uh, op- uh, options you offer on, on your coaching. I know you have individual single sessions and uh, package sessions. And uh, what are some of those options? Well, and thank you for letting me share that. Um, it's a, the thing that we think about at Living Full Out is we want to meet everybody where they are. So some people are auditorial learners like myself, video, audio, that kind of thing. Yeah. Other people want to hold a book. They want to read an article. And then there are people that actually want to be face-to-face. Yeah. They need a hug, you know, they need the <laughs> vent. And so that sometimes is where the coaching would come in, whether it's in person or by phone. Oh, so see. it's really about considering how do you learn best how do you grow best and so if you're somebody who really likes music and likes listening to people speak and and would enjoy our radio show or enjoy going to our youtube channel and seeing motivational videos and that is the lane for you if you're somebody that you know, it's really you'd be dealing with a, a big life dilemma, and maybe you've talked to all your friends and all your family, and they're tired of hearing about it. I'm fresh meat, right? Come yeah. to me, <laughs> and if you're not local, we can talk over the phone, or if you would like to come to Huntington Beach or the Santa Monica area, then um, of course... This would be a good time of the that. year to do that. <laughs> That's right. Come on over. If you live so where it's I really do about anyway. growing. It's about living full out. Well, tell us a bit about your personal development boot camp. I know that was fascinating when I saw that on your website. Yeah, you know, what we did is over the last couple of years, we really surveyed all the different areas where people were trying to make a difference, make movement, 
make change happen in their life. And then we also considered, you know, where are people stuck? Where are their concerns? Where are their stresses and fears? And so in this personal development boot camp, we take you through 10 different ways in, way, in ways in which you can make change happen in your life. And it might be addressing a fear that you have. Maybe you have a fear of the dark. Maybe yeah. you have a fear of sharks, right? Maybe it is being unsettled about change, like you're worried about leaving a relationship or starting one or moving to a new area. Or maybe it's just feeling not secure, and you see everybody else seems to be happy and confident, but you're like, well, what's wrong with me? There is nothing wrong with you. We just kind of have to peel away the layers and see where that uncertainty comes from. So the Personnel Development Boot Camp is a study-at-home program where you can go at your own pace, Oh, and great. then you're going to learn and you're going to grow. and it's, it's You can just start this powerful. at any time, right? It's any not, time. It, you go at your own speed. Yeah. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, that's great. And uh, they can find all uh, all about that on your uh, website. But uh, you're also a highly regarded public speaker. Uh, how would someone get in touch with you, uh, say, for your uh, motivational speeches, like unlock your potential, how to stimulate your business and make it work for you and release the powerhouse within you. They all sound like fascinating topics. How Yeah. I mean I, I truly love public speaking and it's it's kind of funny because again, visually impaired, I can't necessarily see all the faces in the audience. But I feel the energy, and it's about knowing that other people to your right and to your left are are there for the same same common goal. So if somebody would like to talk about customizing a presentation for your group, they can just reach out to me at connect at livingfullout.com. Or, you know, I just invite people to pick up the phone. I love to talk. I've got the gift of gab. (laughs) And they can call us at uh, 310-909-7800. Okay. And you also host a radio and TV talk show. Uh, you can listen to the radio show anytime, uh, and they do that through your website also, do they? They do. They do. And and you know what? A lot of our guests that come on, they're everyday people. They have they maybe have had an accident that changed their life or yeah. maybe they have a health condition or something's happened. But you know what? I believe that just like you and I, even your your audience – some of them might have a story. So yeah. if somebody would like to reach out to us at connect at com, and you've overcome a hurdle in your life, we'd love to hear about it and maybe have you on as a guest. Yeah, that's great. Well, in conclusion, I love this phrase from Nancy Solari's website, you don't need sight to have vision. And I think you'll all agree from listening to her today that Nancy has proven this maxim many times over. Being sighted, I'm almost ashamed that I'm not in in Nancy's league. And so are you ready to live full out? Identify your life purpose, learn how to try new things and trust your decisions, develop skills to form and nurture relationships, discover your very own inner strength and resilience, gain strategies to manage stress. If so, Nancy Solari is your resource on all of these items. And visit her website today, livingfullout.com. And thanks a ton, Nancy, for your return visit and best of success in all that you do. Thank you for having me. Well, let's turn to a whole new subject, breath work. We all breathe, right? To stay alive, we kind of have to, don't we? But when was the last time you thought about how you were breathing What if someone told you there was a way to harness the power of your breath to ease stress, promote wellness, alleviate chronic physical pain, bring you good cheer, and wake you up to your full potential? I know it's hard to believe, but my next guest, author, speaker, coach, and breath expert, Lauren Chillick-Caffritz, is here to explain how conscious breathing can help you live intentionally and radically transform your life for the better. And here are Lauren's qualifications. She's an internationally recognized breathwork teacher, speaker, and coach. As founder of Experience Breath, Lauren brings guidance, compassion, and joy to her clients in both individual and group breathwork sessions. And she's author of the groundbreaking 2019 book, Breath Love, 
that we'll talk about today. And hello, Lauren Shellett Kraft Kaffritz, and welcome to Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age. Uh, thank you so much for having me, Roy. Well, if we can, can we please begin with a definition of the term breath work? What does uh, that term mean, and how can breath work benefit you and me? That's a wonderful way to start. So for me, breath work is conscious, connected breathing that promotes wellness. Oh. There's so many different ways to breathe, and there's so many different um, healthy tips and things that we could talk about with different breath patterns. But breath work itself, in my definition, is the conscious, connected, almost circular breathing that boosts your immune system, gives you more energy, brings more joy in your life. It's it's a powerful tool. Well, it sounds like it. Well, your bio reveals that you were not always the uh, positive teacher and promoter of conscious breathing. Please tell us about the frightening and painful condition with your stiff neck that you had when your first son was born and through how through breath work you became able to release uh, the tension and pain plus reconnect with the love of art that you enjoyed as a child. A lot of benefits gained there from it. Oh, my goodness. It was amazing. So, um, yeah, I, I had pain so intense in my neck that it felt like sciatica in my neck. Wow. So just turning it slightly would create this buzzing pain. It was off the charts. And so it was um, hard to I, look up, I guess, wasn't it? Say it again. <laughs> wasn't it hard for you to look up at the sky? Oh, I couldn't do anything. And and my husband and I had a nine month old son, so just yeah. trying to carry him and and handle the Im- immense amount of pain was crazy. And so um, I ended up in a surgeon's office who said that they would need to do surgery, and I said absolutely <laughs> not. I have a yeah, nine month old. That's my favorite doctor's prescription for anything a little surgery (laughs) yeah and I was like no no I have a nine month old I gotta find something so um a relative who has her PhD in um a whole bunch of things but one of the things is working with people with pain said to me you're going to go to a physiatrist Mm-hmm. which is a um, a doctor that works with the muscles around the area that are tight yeah. or having, you know, wherever your injury is, they strengthen the muscles around the injury. And that was amazing. That began to work, and it was super expensive. And I was working with PTs, and I asked the PTs, what else could, could I do? And that began my journey with, you know, I ended up going to massage therapy, and I started with some incredibly gentle, gentle yoga classes. And oh, that's great. One thing led to another. Each thing helped me but didn't completely clear me. And it wasn't until I got to breath work where, you know, I was taught to do this certain breathing pattern, and I was explaining to her all the different things that were going on with me. And halfway through the, sis- the session, I s- sat straight up, and I'm like, oh, I fully understand huh. that the pain in my neck was both physical and there was a psychological piece to it. Well, let's get on to the good stuff. You promised tips to harness the power of our breath in order to uh, clear out, as you put it, the emotional gunk and to move forward relaxed and renewed, ready to live our best lives. Can you give us a few of these tips now? Absolutely. So re- remember, there was a piece of my neck that was emotional, and emotion, yeah. you know, emotions are just energy in motion, right? Yeah, yeah. So when emotion gets yeah. stuck in our body, it hurts. So if you can start to begin to make your breath your friend and close your eyes and take some breaths first just to – I would have everyone who's listening right now, and you could do it too, Roy, if you'd like, just close your eyes for a minute and take three breaths. Mouth or nose. That sounds relaxing just to hear you do it. Yeah, one more. And you just begin to notice, like, is the breath uh, tight or loose today? Can I get it in my belly? Is it in my chest? You know, where where am I breathing today? So mm. just beginning to get some breath awareness is going to begin to open up your breathing pattern. Oh, yeah. 
Um, the other thing is I just taught at uh, in Washington MedStar Washington Hospital Center. I got to work oh. with 94 doctors, nurses, and clinicians. And I was teaching them a very fast way to open your breath up is using breath, movement, and sound. And the fun story is I got them to do a cookie monster. Would you like to hear what that is? Yeah. (laughs) So I had them breathe their hands up in the air, and then I had them exhale it with a... And they just shook their whole body, and they made that cookie monster sound. And when they were done, they were laughing. And it was so great to see them. Because they came in, like, some had scrubs on. They had just come out of surgery. and yeah. Anyway, they came in all different ways. And after they did one Cookie Monster, they had these bright smiles on their faces. It was wonderful. <laughs> I'll have to remember to do a Cookie Monster <laughs> after the program. <laughs> it works for all ages. It's amazing. You know, it's great with little ones. It's great with people who are 90, you know, Cookie Monsters. Yeah. Because think about it, when you laugh, too, what is laughter? Yeah, that's a way to open the breath. bad mood. <laughs> yeah, when you laugh, it's breath, movement, and sound, right? <laughs> yeah. right? You know, it's like everything's moving. So that's another way. Um, we hold a lot of tension in our eyes. And mm. so people have trouble with their eyes. And so what I suggest a lot of times is to take 10 socially unacceptable breaths. So I'll just do two so you can hear them. So it's like a... (gasps) (gasps) And as you do it, you're making noise in and you're making noise out and you're squeezing your eyeballs because even I just did one and my eyes are dry right now. I'd have to do like two or three before they start to water. And once your eyes start to water, not only are you releasing tension, but it's also helping you with eye health. Well, that's great. Two two birds with one stone. <laughs> exactly. Um, another thing is, you know, as we move through our day, you know, we get tight. Our central nervous system goes on tilt. You know, yeah. we're handling yeah. too many things. And so I just have people stand up, and then I have them just breathe while they bounce on their heels. So it's like a... <sighs> yeah, that's good. And they bounce up and down, and what that does as you bounce on your heels is you're resetting your central nervous system. (laughs) You'll feel a very gentle buzz go down your spine, and it feels really good. Hmm. And you just start to feel better after you do that. I like to think about something that makes you angry and then start to wiggle your whole body. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Because it's hard to stay mad when you wiggle, right? That's true. And it's hard to uh, keep from smiling when you're chuckling, too. So <laughs> true. All that works together. Well, perhaps most amazing to me, in your book, Breath Love, you describe how learning to breathe properly has helped clients heal from numerous health issues. Can you please uh, briefly describe one or two of these remarkable recoveries? I oh, absolutely. Know just how, how worthwhile breath, uh, breath work is. Well, just to name a few, like um, there was one person who came to me who had um, asthma so bad that they walked around all the time clutching an inhaler. Wow. So they came for a breath session with me, and they, ha- they were clutching their inhaler as they lay down to breathe. And I said, are you sure you're going to need that? And, um, and they said, oh, absolutely. <laughs> and when we were almost done the, the breath session, they hadn't used it once. And I noticed they finally dropped it. Huh. At the end of the session, they sat up and they're like, oh, my goodness, I've never gone that long without having to take a puff. Yeah, their fear was partly why they needed that breathalyzer. Yeah. So fear just of learning what happened how to if do- they didn't use it. And then they forgot about their fear and uh, they didn't need it. <laughs> it's, it's amazing. And also I had them do like little teeny like a mouse, like a little mouse breath, like a Oh. Like tiny, tiny little breaths to show them that it doesn't take a lot of air to oh, feel okay. You don't need very much. You could just get in a little and you're going to be okay. And once they got comfortable with the little breaths, they started to build them up and they're like, oh. So they didn't get very panicky because a lot of people tell me when they have asthma that 
they the biggest fear is that they can't get enough air. So once yeah. I show them you don't need very much and they trust it, it shifts that whole relationship. Yeah, there's nothing more scary than to feel like you can't get enough air in. <laughs> yeah, it's true. And then um, I, I've had people come with uh, tremendous amounts of anxiety yeah. And teaching them, like if you put two hands on your belly right now and you breathe into your hands, so as you inhale, the hand goes out like you're blowing up a balloon, and as yeah. you exhale, the belly button comes down to the spine, you know, towards your spine. And as you breathe this way, you're actually using your diaphragm. Oh. And what's happening is, you're telling your central nervous system that you're okay, and it's lowering the cortisol and adrenaline in your blood, and you just start to feel better. Yeah, so, so there is a scientific uh, logic behind this breath exercising. Oh, huge, huge. So, so just, you know, if you're feeling a little out of sorts, just feeling a little anxious, remember to... You can, you know, you could be in a meeting and fold your arms over your belly. No one will know what you're doing. You can breathe in and out through your nose. No one will know. And you can take these long, slow inhale and exhale through your nose. And probably by the third breath of take, doing some of this belly breathing, you're going to feel better. Well, that's great. Well, for your highly acclaimed book, Breath Love, who was your primary target uh, audience for that? Who should uh, read your book? I guess all of us could use it, but... Uh... So it's amazing because, you know, I taught a six-year-old how to do breath work. And when she got it, her her um, dad would come home stressed from work, and she said, come on, we're going to the couch to breathe. <laughs> and she would <laughs> help her dad, you know. Yeah, so, that's great. You know, from six to 100, there's always – there's something in my book that's going to – give you peace of mind, whether it's a health issue or stress or anxiety, you know, there's, and I made the book very, very simple. And I put a lot of um, humor and kindness in it. Oh, that's great. I like in the promotion how it says, change your breath, change your mind, change your life. Well, that's a great connection there. Yeah. If you can the, do that. If people go, if they go to breathlove.com, um, they can. There's a whole bunch of information about the book on breathlove.com oh. and information about me and a little bit more detail about what breathwork is is on the website too. Yeah, no, there's also a website, embracebreath.com. I know I went to. Oh, oh, experience breath. Experience breath. Yeah, that's right. Dot com. Yes, they go to the same place, breathlove.com oh. and experience breath. Uh, experience breath. Dot com go to the same location. Okay, as long as we get the same place, it doesn't matter which one we use it. Well, where's the best place for listeners to go to uh, preview and purchase your book, Breath Love? Oh, it's all over. You know, if if you live in the Washington area, I know that um, Politics and Prose has it. If you are online, I know that. Amazon.com, Walmart, uh, Target, Barnes & Noble has it, barnesandnoble.com. There's a lot of places. If you just put breath love, um, if you put breath love in your Google, um, you'll find it. Yeah, it's easy to find. And I noticed from your website that you offer private 90-minute uh, breath work coaching sessions, weekly in-person group sessions in Bethesda, Maryland, plus periodic breath love workshops, seminars, and retreats. And I guess they'd go to that breathlove.com to uh, find out about those or to contact you for a private session. Absolutely. You can go to the events page and see what's coming up. You can go to the contact page to find me. Um, I'm just always excited to teach people how powerful their breath is and so they can use it for themselves. Yeah, that's great. Well, let's end today's program on a positive note. It sounds too simple to be true, but according to my guest, as I'm sure she convinced you, Lauren chellick Caffritz says it's possible through breathwork training to be both powerful and fully present at the same time. And here's just a few of the uh, proven benefits of breathwork that's contained in her book, relieves stress and anxiety, increases energy, boosts immune systems, improves digestion, improves heart health, assists in both 
surgery preparation and healing and helps folks overcome addictions and increases self-love, love for being alive, and implants a consistently positive outlook on the future. And what do you have to lose? To me, breath work sounds like something that's certainly worth trying, and I highly recommend you preview Lauren Chellick Crawford's book, Breath Love, and visit her website, and that's breathlove.com or experiencebreath.com. You can go to either one. And thanks to me and Lauren for your sound advice. Thank you so much for the interview. I really enjoyed uh, getting to talk with you. And thanks to all of you for tuning in. Join us again next week when my guests will talk all about toxic fellow employees in the workplace and possible solutions to make things better. And I guess breath work would be one of those solutions. <laughs> <laughs> thanks so much, and uh, bye for now. From Middle age can be your best age. You've been listening to Middle Age Can Be Your Best Age, hosted by Roy Richards, an expert on midlife renewal and author of both A Midlife Challenge, Wake Up, and Wake Up, Captain and Crew, Restart Your Engines. You can learn more about Roy and his Middle Age Renewal Training System by visiting his website, middleagerenewal.com.